Alright, hey out there everybody, I am Reaper with Miniman Airsoft, and today I'm going to be doing a review of the Magpul PTS M bus sights in black, generation 1. Now these are very good sights, uh, I got these for $50 at a local gun show. Very similar to the USA version, although the USA versions do cost about $37 for the front sight and around $50 for the rear sight. But that's the normal markup price of the PTS ones again, so there's no real difference in them, uh, price-wise at least. Uh, whereas quality goes, the uh, Magpul USA ones are a bit nicer quality, and uh, yeah. Plus, you can take them back and forth between a real AR and your airsoft gun or whatever you're running it on, because the USA are made for real firearms. The PTS are not; they're a professional training sport, which basically just means airsoft. Now, uh, so a lot of the features in these are going to be similar, so if you have both or are planning on buying the USA version, they're gonna be, a lot of the features are going to be very similar to these, so just stay tuned if you're interested. Alright, uh, when you get them, really nice, a decent box like this gives it, gives it decent padding. It's a, just a cardboard box. Folds open from the front. There's two compartments, one for the front sight, one for the rear sight. Very basic. It does not come with a front sight adjustment tool like I had hoped or basically anything, it just comes with the two sights. But, whatever, slide that down to the end. All right, uh, the sights themselves are pretty nice quality. They're, again, made of Magpul's famous polymer. Very durable, very nice. Although well, they're not gonna be heat uh, resistant like the uh, Magpul USA ones are. Note about the USA ones, if you have a front sight, do not mount it on the gas block of your AR. It will melt it. Um, all right, so let's talk about the front sight. The front sight folds down. It has three positions of deployment. There's a small tab on this side here, right above my finger. There's one on the opposite side in the same position. And the entire top half of the sight, and the, for the forward half of it, can be used to deploy. You can just karate chop it up like that, or however you want, just hit it with your thumb if that's faster and easier, but then uh, hitting it with your uh, thumb on the side. And just flip it up like that. Uh, now this sight does come in three main pieces basically. There's a mounting base down here, the deployment uh, paddle or whatever you want to call it, and then the uh, sight aperture itself up here. There's just a simple spring inside that flips it up. Uh, now when I got these, I know I had to do it. Uh, you may have to do it too because it's just factory uh, malfunction or whatever like that. Uh, sometimes there might be a little bit of excess plastic on the small uh, arms there that hold the sight in place in either position. Sometimes there's excess plastic and when it folds up or it folds down, you may not want to see it all the way down. You can just easily take a uh, knife or uh, exacto knife or anything, uh, like I use this uh, K-Bar knife for it. Just scraped a little bit of, off the sides once I had it uh, taken off my gun. Uh, that fixed the problem right away. Also there's probably going to be some excess plastic on the sides or on the side or just anywhere you might see it. Uh, I know I'm a bit OCD about that so I had to clean it up, make it look real nice. Alright, uh, now some people might not care, so whatever about that. Uh, to mount these, it's very simple. Uh, these actually take an Allen uh, key, or an Allen wrench to unlock it, like this one. Uh, you just need to stick it in there, undo the screw, slide it on the rail system. If you're mounting the front sight, usually you can get by by sliding down from the front and mounting it right in the edge of the rail system. That gives it the best look, in my opinion. Uh, you just tighten the screw down right there, it's going to be just fine. Uh, for the rear one, you might actually uh, get away with being able to mount it from the rear. If you pull the charging handle back, you can slide this down over the end of the back of the receiver and slide it on there and tighten it down. Uh, if that doesn't work, you may need to go from the front of the receiver. If you have a delta ring, if you have enough mo uh, room, you can get in there and you can slide it back. Or if you have a mono rail and it doesn't just want to go on from the back of the gun, you can maybe get a hammer or something, tap it from the base down here all the way down to the end of the gun, get it mounted all correctly. Uh, now the actual rear sight itself, to uh, talk a bit about that, there is a uh, left and right adjustment right back here. It does not adjust up and down like normal A2 uh, rear sights on M4s. For elevation, you actually need to adjust the front sight up here. Like I said, there's no tool to adjust that. Actually, to adjust that, you need to take out a tiny Allen screw here, just to the rear of the sight that locks it in place. You take that out and then uh, you need to be careful with this because uh, I tried using the Allen wrench, same thing, to get in between the two, get to get in between the grooves to rotate it up and down and that just started uh, tearing away the plastic and uh, well, 
polymer a bit and started messing with it and started uh, denting it up a little bit and making it not look as good. So I just stopped trying and I just run Kentucky windage with it most of the time if my BBs are flying off course. Uh, with the uh, Magpul USA sights, you're going to get a front sight adjustment tool with that and it's going to be much simpler. Or you can actually use a spent uh, 223 or 556 shell, crimp in one side of it and use that to adjust it. That's what. Uh, that's part of the reason why Magpul did that is so you could field adjust it for uh, soldiers in the military. Uh, but back to the rear sight, again, three positions of deployment, one paddle on this side, the entire top surface, and a paddle on this seat, on this side, pounds the same with the same screw, uh, adjusts left and right. Now on the PTS version, it's not going to be as nice of a definitive click as you might be used to from A2 sites. It's going to be a bit more soft, but uh, it's just going to adjust all the same, you just need to get it right for the windage of uh, whatever event you're at. Uh, there is two apertures on this. Now it may not look like it because uh, very clever design on Magpul's part. The two apertures fold up inside themselves, like this. You just fold it down and then you have a large aperture. When the side is folded up, this small cone here folds inside of the large aperture, making it smaller. The camera can see that there. It's very nice, it's a very cool feature about that. As you go between the sides very quickly for your, uh, what situa whatever situation you're in. And when they're folded down, it keeps a nice fluff look when you fold them together. You don't have some uh, annoying peg sticking up or anything like that. Uh, folding them down is very easy. Minimal force required. Or, sorry, I'm hold this down lower. Minimal force required. Just fold them down, no problem. Fold them down. They do stick up a bit. Uh, half of an inch, uh, three quarters of an inch. Uh, now, the Generation 2 version of these. Uh, whether they be the PTS or the USA version, they're going to sit only a half inch above this, and it's going to be uh, uh, a bit lower down for if you're running optics and you have, uh, say, a magnifier folded over top of this or something like that on your red dot or whatever site you're running. It won't get in the way as much, and uh, it'll just look a lot nicer. Oh, no, these are great sites. I give the PTS versions a just a 4 out of 5. Uh, I give the USA versions a 5 out of 5 because they're... Uh, much nicer quality, very durable, very nice. You're not going to have to do the cleaning up of the edges like that. It's going to be less likely for that to happen. Uh, these sites do come in four different colors, or five different colors, depending on the website you go to. I know LaRue has a fifth color, which I haven't found anywhere else. Uh, but you can get these in black, OD, foliage green, uh, flat dark earth, and urban dark earth, which is more of a flat gray style, style color. That is only available on LaRueTactical.com. Uh, again, I got these at a local gun show for $50. Uh, I recommend checking out uh, any local gun shows or anything like that because you can usually haggle, get prices lower down, and you don't have to wait for shipping or anything. Although, if it is going to cost you more at the gun show, just go with online. Go with whatever the better deal is going to be. Alright, that should be just about it for this review. Remember, uh, check out our channel if you want to see some reviews of some guns, other products. I know I'm going to be doing some Red Dots and other Magpul products soon, so... Just hop on to our channel, rate, subscribe, don't leave hate in the comments, not appreciated, not welcome, and it's just not cool. Thanks for watching.